Hey guys, it's Holly. Welcome back to another edition of Ask Super Holly, where I pick out the most unique and interesting questions that you guys ask me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and of course here on YouTube, and I try to answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you to everyone that submitted their questions. Don't forget to follow me on the social network of your choice so you can keep tabs on me when I'm not recording videos on YouTube. So we cut off the Spanish Q&A with a very important question from Kevin Melgar. It was about how many kids I want to have. And it's not just about me, it's about Ben as well. And let's be honest, there are about 75 versions of this question. You guys want to know if we're having kids, when we want to have kids, and how many we want. So, <laughs> I'll give you some very exciting news. We do want kids, and we are probably going to stop trying not to have them next year. I used to say I wanted five kids just because I grew up with four siblings and it was awesome. I'm pretty sure the ship has sailed on that one. So I'm just gonna say three and I know that Ben is really happy with that number as well. Ana Rivera asks, how often do people look at you in shock when you start speaking fluent Spanish? <laughs> All the time. Marifer Leal says, what would you like to change or improve about yourself? There's so much that I would change and improve about myself. But if I had to choose one thing, it would be to have more control over my emotions. I feel like when I get angry and my blood starts boiling, it reaches a point where it's almost like there's no return. And I'm not saying that I do really, really rash or stupid things, but I just cannot make myself snap out of it. I would love to be able to really apply the mind over matter mindset in that moment and be like, I'm over it, I'm fine, I'm happy again. But it takes a while. The Light Despondent says, your dad seems like a very smart individual, so I gotta ask, what's the most important thing that your dad has ever taught you? That is a tough question. He has taught me so many important things. I'd say the most important thing my dad taught me, and he definitely led by example, was to not be afraid to ask questions, to challenge your beliefs, and to try to look at things from different angles. M Ranking says, what would be your advice to have self-confidence and to open a YouTube channel? I would say, Always remember that there's no one in the world quite like you and that no one is going to be able to bring your exact flair to this space called YouTube or to the world for that matter. Also, do not ride the roller coaster of people's opinions of you. You're gonna have people that think you are absolutely amazing and you're also gonna have people that just can't stand you. And if you let those things get to your head, you could really have an inflated ego or you could really get down on yourself. You have to know who you are and know that you're worth has nothing to do with random people on the internet commenting. At the same time, it's important to be open to constructive criticism and to not freak out when you hear something that might actually be true. We all have things we can improve on, that just means we're human. Lauren says, my school has taught me how to read and write Spanish very well, but not how to speak it. I get super nervous to speak in front of people, so I just don't. What advice or encouragement would you give me and others like me? Well, Lauren, thank you for being vulnerable with that question. Definitely the first thing I can tell you is that we all go through this on some level. We don't want to open ourselves up to make mistakes and sound stupid. But to be honest, that's the only way you can learn. You have to start speaking and be willing to make mistakes and be corrected and that's okay. I guess my main bit of encouragement would be we all go through it. Absolutely, it is a step that you must get over in order to acquire a new language and just have fun with it. It'll make for some really good stories later. And make sure to have a trustworthy friend that can correct you without making you feel bad about it. King Ortega says, I know that you're in love with the Mexican culture and that this greatly influenced your life, but if you had never been to Mexico, do you think you would be the typical gringa? Or what type of person do you think you would be? It is so hard to extrapolate or separate our personality from our experiences. I don't know how to answer this question. Daniel Garcia says, what makes you want to do better in life? Wow, that's a deep question. I don't really know what it is that motivates me, but I feel like it's very much within my core. I just want to do better. I want to be a better wife for Ben. I feel like he deserves it. I want to be more caring and less selfish and a better sister, a better daughter. I want to do a better job at helping people here on YouTube. What is it that motivates me? I have no idea. Alisa asks, would you rather travel to the future or to the past? I'm a little scared of the future. I think I'd rather travel to the past, as long as I can come back to the present. Mary asks, would you rather discover what there is in the depths of the sea or the universe? That is quite a question there, Mary. I would have to choose the depths of the universe just because it's so far away and the possibilities really are endless. I've often wondered if you keep going in a straight line just for millions of light years, if you would come back to the same place, like maybe 
the actuality of space that we can travel through is also spherical. Wouldn't that be amazing? I would love to see if there's life on other planets. There's just so much I'd love to discover about outer space. Not to underappreciate the ocean, but you know, I had to choose one. Carolina asks, what particular experience inspired you to start the don't be like Holly section of your channel? Oh girl, I don't even know if it was a particular experience. I think I was reflecting on my life in my 20s and thinking, wow, I made some bad decisions. And I realized that a lot of you guys are pretty young and so I thought, you know what, if you can just learn from a few of my mistakes and not go down those paths that I did, I could save you so much grief. So hopefully some of you guys are learning from my mistakes. And I'm glad you're having fun with them too. Jacqueline asks, what has been the weirdest dream you've ever had? Girl, I used to have this recurring dream when I was like six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 years old. It started off with my sister Heather and myself under a gigantic ping pong table. I'm talking like as tall as the roof. And there were so many echoes in this room and I don't know why, but those echoes really, really created a creepy atmosphere. And we were sitting under the ping pong table and we did not know how to get out. And you would just see legs of gigantic humans. And all of a sudden we were walking on top of a bunch of bricks stacked on top of each other in the middle of a lake full of crocodiles. And on the other side was my mom waiting with her arms open. We just had to cross over the teetering bricks. Such a weird dream and I had it at least 18 times throughout my childhood. Chelsea Jacobo says, what language will you teach your children first? Ben and I have to get on the same page about this. I think it's really important for them to hear both languages from infancy. So we're gonna have to read to them in both languages, talk to each other in front of them in both languages. And I'm really hoping that they can just learn both at the same time. I've heard from other parents who have done this that sometimes it takes the kids a little bit longer to start talking, but when they do, they're basically fluent in both languages. Adrian asks, what is your favorite animal? I really like penguins and it's quite the dilemma because I really don't do well in the cold, but I love penguins. I would love to go visit them in their natural habitat, but I would have to be in some sort of a climate controlled bubble. <laughs> Arroyo6917 says, what is your favorite dish from the US and your favorite dish from Mexico? Well, the first thing that comes to mind from the US is my mom's mashed potatoes and gravy. <laughs> I love mashed potatoes and gravy. Lots and lots of gravy, definitely. And from Mexico, I would have to say tacos al pastor. This is literally off the top of my head right now. I don't know if I'd answer differently tomorrow. Oscar Ulloa asks, have you ever been through an existential crisis? If so, how did you get over it? I don't know about an existential crisis, but I do remember that every single year of my life I enjoyed so much that I really started to wonder if I had a condition. I was like, is it really possible for every single year to be better than the previous one? And then all of a sudden, 2000 came. And that year was not better than the previous ones. And I just kind of didn't know what I was doing. It was my first year of college. I didn't know what I wanted to be. I didn't know what I wanted to study. I was cold. I'm sure that being cold had a lot to do with it. I had moved back to the US. I just felt out of place. How did I get over it? I told myself to get over it and I made the changes in my life that I needed to make to be happy again. In this case, that meant moving as close as possible to an ocean. Luz Mireya says, do you have some sort of a complex? You seem like your life is so perfect. I wonder if there's anything that keeps you up at night or something that troubles your heart. You know, sometimes I feel like my brain won't turn off. I just want to stop thinking about everything that I want to accomplish and rest. I would say that my biggest complex is feeling like no matter what I do, no matter how hard I work, no matter how hard I try, it's never going to be enough. I don't know who I'm trying to measure up to, I don't know who I'm trying to impress, but I certainly do feel inadequate sometimes. I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not interesting enough, I'm not doing enough, I'm not working hard enough, I'm not focused enough. I get these thoughts and these doubts all the time and it's something that I'm always battling with. Do I win that battle? I would say sometimes, not all the time. It's really important for everyone to realize that no one's life is perfect and just because you see someone smiling all the time and trying to make the best of their life, it doesn't mean that they don't struggle, it doesn't mean that they don't have issues that are constantly hounding them, even if they're just mental issues. Our mindset is our reality. All right, guys, that's about it for today's video. Don't forget to click on my Spanish Q&A if you wanna brush up on your Spanish and hear me answer a few other questions that I didn't address here. 
Thank you so much for joining me and I will talk to you very soon. <laughs> Bye.